I knew this kid, right? And uh, all he wanted to do was draw, paint, and experiment, just like all the other kids. He was surrounded with like all sorts of creative materials, like craft paper and glue and sticks and all sorts of fun things, so anything could be made. And as he grew up, he realized that this sense of, uh, you know, sort of experimentation and openness was called creativity. Now, that kid I just described was me, and I'm sure all of you here can relate to that feeling as a kid, because we're all creative, right? Of course, there's different levels and different ways of being creative. There's big ways and small ways, there's big inventions and there's small solutions, and and either of those are essential. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is how do you hold on to that sense of play and experimentation and sort of unleash it? And I'm going to explain why all of us are creative people and to bust this misconception that that creativity belongs only in the arts. So let's look at the, the concept of creativity. What is it? Is it a painting, a sculpture? Is it a new piece of technology? There's one particular definition that resonated with, with me the most. And that was from um, David and Tom Kelly, who are the founders of IDEO. And they had this cool idea to ask the Dalai Lama's chief English translator, what is the word for creativity in Tibetan? Interestingly, there is no direct translation. But the closest they could find was the word natural, this innate ability in all of us to be creative. So I sort of unpicked this further and read lots of university research about this concept of creativity. And you know, some interesting things sort of emerged. They said that um, the psychological study of, of creativity was essential to human progress. It said that creativity was a series of interrelated forces happening on multiple levels all at once. It also said that in some instances, language could actually inhibit certain forms of visual creativity. And I thought of myself as a kid, much more of a, a visual kid than a, than a words kid. It also taught me about how people had this openness to experience and this sort, of, um, this sort of latent inhibition, if you like, and that was really common attributes in, in highly creative people. It said also that wise people need to understand that there's a balance between intelligence and creativity, the old and the new, um, to make sure that you can actually you know, create an executable idea. It said that people were most creative when they actually worked on things that they enjoyed. They had this sort of intrinsic motivation it's a really important part of creativity is about actually enjoying what you do. It also taught me about this concept of divergent thinking, that sort of free-flowing, sort of spontaneous thinking with the intention of generating as many ideas as possible in a short period of time. And on the flip side, it taught me about convergent thinking, so that disciplined thinking, focusing in on all the possibilities to sort of um, you know, find a workable solution. It taught me about a really interesting concept about the big C, big creativity, creativity that has an impact on many people's lives. And I'm working on a project at the moment, which is a collaboration between businesses and government. And they're going to gather all, our, all this data from our smartphones. They're going to sort of uh, crunch that down into insights and then feed these insights back into various government agencies and departments and hopefully, you know, sort of inform better decision making. That has the potential to change the way our cities work. And then there's the little C. So creativity that happens around us on a daily basis. And I was in a supermarket recently and I saw a microwave popcorn. And I sort of reflected back as a kid and thought, I remember if you didn't quite get the right balance right of oil and popcorn, you'd end up with like a popcorn tsunami, right? And now it's like this tiny little bag that makes perfect popcorn in 30 seconds. So creativity that's around us every day. Now, if you stop and reflect on that sort of kid-like, you know, creative attitude, if you're not careful, maturity has this way of curbing those moments of spontaneity and other kid-like things. So I guess, how do you sort of hold on to that sense of spontaneity and, um, and you know, sort of unleash it in yourself? And the first thing is here, listen to your inner voice. Creativity to me is about listening to your inner voice and actually acting on it. As adults, we have this you know, unconscious constraint inside. And as Tim Brown from IDEO calls it, this act of self-editing. You say in your mind, oh, I can't share that idea yet. It's not good enough yet. No, I won't say that. And if you look at a kid, they just listen to their inner voice and just go for it, right? So I think we could just sort of listen to our inner voice and actually act on it more often. The second thing is about asking questions and holding this mode of inquiry for longer, right? Sort of look at problems from multiple perspectives first. Diverge before you converge. Go slow before you go fast. The average four-year-old will ask over, over 400 questions a day, and by the time we're an adult, we ask less than 100. So ask more questions. And this concept of play and experimentation. Adults often feel embarrassed to share their ideas. 
you know, it's really important that you consider the environment and the place in which you're expecting them to be creative, right? So make sure it feels relaxed and it feels sort of, you know, uh, provides a sense of security uh, for them. I was talking to a colleague at work uh, recently and um, he told me that we live in an era of unprecedented change. It's defined by breakthrough technologies, there's uncertain global economies, there's political revolutions, right? But it's going to be creativity that helps us redefine the future and help us realise what is possible, right? Creativity is a really valued skill in business. And as, as tried and true business models break down, it's going to be creativity that's going to help us sort of redesign the future. And in a recent poll of, from IBM, they asked 1,500 CEOs what was the number one leadership competence of the future, and they said it was creativity. Now, over my 15-year career, you know, I've learned a few things that actually will stop people from being creative. And the first one is the dreaded brainstorm. Right? <laughs> How many of you have been to a brainstorm session that was hopelessly uncreative? I actually believe you should stop and reflect on a problem or a creative challenge alone and then sort of fold it back into the crowd and use the crowd and the collective to sort of critique and, and sort of analyse those ideas. I think it's been a more, you know, more productive way of being creative. And the second thing here is thinking analogue. We often think inside our laptops. And I think there's an opportunity for us to be a lot more analogue in the way that we work through things. Building physical prototypes or actually drawing out a problem in pictures is not just a better experience, but it actually produces more creative outcomes. I was recently working with a bunch of lawyers and I asked them to draw out the litigation process. And that was an interesting <laughs> exercise in itself. And, uh, you know, it was a really interesting technique because it actually exposed all these elements that they didn't really consider in having drawing it out in a picture. So think analog. So the question I think we need to ask ourselves here today is how do we nourish creativity in ourselves and in other people? And the first thing here is it's about inspiration. You can't expect to be creative unless you're inspired. You need to find things that you find inspiring in your life and share them whether it be cool movies or cool books or cool stories, right? You need to take it to work, bring them home, share that inspiration. You can't expect to be creative unless you're inspired. And the second thing here is taking a what if mentality rather than a what is. So what if we did this rather than what is it that we have to work with? You know, countless occasions I've had my designers, you know, sort of freaking out and I say, look, just let go of all the constraints and create and we'll find our way back to the problem later, which is usually budget. <laughs> and lastly, the power of a smile and play and laughter. I think sometimes we take some things far too seriously. And a little trick I do at the start of a, a workshop is I go around the circle and I ask each person to tell me what, the, what was their first paying job that they did. And it's not only just, you know, great to learn about other people, but it's hilarious some of the things people do for money when they're a teenager, <laughs> right? So I'm going to close this session with an exercise, and I see you've got all your books ready to go. But before I do that, I'm just going to leave you with two last thoughts. That is, tap into your inner child, because we all have it inside, and believe that you're creative, because it's totally natural to do so. Now, what I'm going to get you guys to do now, on the last page in that booklet, there's sort of one page there, which um, is perfect for a little canvas. And what I'm going to get you guys to do today is a, is a, is a self-portrait of your creative self, OK? but there's a slight hitch to it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna close your eyes and you're gonna draw yourself with your eyes closed, but you're not allowed to lift your pen off the page. So it's a <laughs> continuous line, all right? Is everyone ready to go? You're gonna have 15 seconds to do it. You're gonna draw your face. Everyone close your eyes. Now go. Draw a self-portrait of your creative self. Imagine the eyes and the ears and the hair and the lashes. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, open your eyes. Now there's a picture <laughs> of you. <laughs> okay. Now, the reason... <laughs> Okay, the reason I got you to do that, the reason I got you to do that is so you can tear it out, so you can tear it out, put it on your fridge, and it will remind you of your creative self. So everyone's creative. Thank you.